Okay, so the first thing you have to accept about doing chemical reactions is the only way you're going to get the right products is if you first look up the ionic charges of every single atom involved in the reactants. So let's just try this here. If I look up uh, Ta on my periodic table, I will see that it is a plus 5 ion. And we'll just go with whatever is the most common uh, one. So I'm just going to write that up above it, plus 5. And oxygen I look up, I see, is a minus 2. So remember, uh, the trick is you always put the positive first, that'd be the Ta, and you put the negative second, that's O. Ta is plus 5, oxygen is minus 2. So remember, what we do now is we swap and simplify. So this 2 is going to come down here, and this 5 is going to come down here. And that's my product, TaO5. Now this part up here is technically not part of it. I just write it there to help me guide it. Uh, I actually don't, but I'm encouraging you to do so. And this, by the way, is what's known as, uh, since I have an element reacting with an element, this is what we call a synthesis reaction. I'm just going to write that down. That's called a synthesis, just to help you get a sense of it. I know I didn't ask for that here, but that's a synthesis. This next one here, I look at this. It, there's, there's only one reactant, and it's a compound. There's no plus. It's just one thing. Well, when that happens, it's what we call a decomposition. Uh, decom I'll just write decomp. And the great thing about decomposition reactions is all you have to do is separate these two from each other with a plus sign, and then check for pesky sevens. So I'm going to separate. I'm going to have MN plus O. So I just separate these two elements from each other. And then I look here and see, well, MN is not a pesky 7, but O is, so I'm going to put it 2. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm not going to yell at you this time like you're doing in class, but here's what you've got to understand. The numbers on this side in the reactants have nothing to do with the numbers over here. These, This is a 2 because this is a pesky 7, and it bonds with itself. This is a 5 because it takes 5 negative 2's to cancel out 2 positive 5's. So whatever you do, do not try to carry the 3 from this auction over to here. That is the classic mistakes that kids make when they don't understand chemistry. You are simply trying to say what uh, substances are going to be formed in this chemical reaction. Well, let's keep going now. <clears throat> so copper, if I look up, is a plus 2. Chlorine is a minus 1. Don't worry how many of them there are. Zirconium, when I look up, zirconium is a plus 4. Now what I have to remember is this. In a chemical reaction, I always make new positive-negative combinations. Boys dancing with girls. Boy, girl, positive-negative. There's only one other positive-negative combination I can make, and that would be to take this positive and combine it with this negative. So remember, you always put the positive one first, the negative one second. Now you look up their ionic charges. Zirconium is a plus four. Chloride is a minus one. So then you swap and simplify. So I need one zirconium. Done. I'll need four chlorides. That doesn't uh, simplify. Now this type, because I have a compound reacting with a single element, we call this a single displacement. Single displacement or sometimes they're referred to as single replacement. Uh, I'll probably use the term displacement more often, but either one is correct. Now let's look at the next one. Here we've got a compound called calcium phosphate and one here called deterbium cyanide. Uh, so I have two compounds reacting together. I have a positive and a negative and a positive and a negative. So this is one I, I, I likened to uh, square dancing. This is what's known as a double displacement, double disp. Okay. Now, again, I'm going to look up their numbers. Calcium is a plus 2. Phosphate is a minus 3. Ytterbium is a plus 3. And cyanide is a minus 1. Now, if you look, <clears throat> these are what they are. I could have got this by just doing the reverse swap. This is a 3 and this is a 2, so I could have undone them to figure out what that is. All right? I have one of these and three of these. That's always what you do. You swap and simplify. Because three positive 2s cancel out two negative 3s. 
1, positive 3, cancels out 3 negative 1's. Now, I'm going to make new positive negative combinations. I write the positive first. So what I do with the double displacement is I leave the positives where they are, and I have the two non-metals, uh, the two negatives swap. So here you go. I'm going to leave the calcium here, and instead of pairing it with phosphate, I'm going to pair it with cyanide. Now this is plus 2, and this is minus 1, so we're going to swap numbers now. I'll need one of these, and I'll need two of these. And the way you get two polyatomic ions is you put parentheses, 2, plus ytterbium, which is plus 3, is going to combine with phosphate, which is negative 3. And since this one is plus 3, well here I'll just go ahead and do this. Since this one here is a plus 3, and this is a minus 3, well, what we could do is we could swap 3 to 3 and then simplify, which is a 1 to 1. Let's look at our next one here. Sodium. Now, what type is this? Uh, it looks to me like we've got a single displacement. A single D, not a sunny D. So, sodium is a plus 1. Carbonate is a minus 2. Zinc, the most common... Uh, and I charge for zinc is a 2. Actually, the only one is a 2. So, I'm going to make new positive-negative combinations. That means that zinc is going to be combined with carbonate. Zinc is a plus 2. Carbonate is a minus 2. And that's a 2 to 2 ratio, which is a 1 to 1. I'm just going to leave it alone. Plus, who got displaced? Well, poor old sodium got displaced. Let's move this whole deal up here. All right, what do I got now? I've got <coughs> I got calcium, an element, reacting with nitrogen, an element. So when I have two elements combining, that is called synthesis. Now remember, I did not ask you to write this down. I'm just doing this to try to help you picture it. Now calcium is a plus two. Nitrogen is a minus three. I put the positive one first, which is a plus two. I put the negative one second, which is a negative three. And we're going to swap. That's going to be a three to two ratio, which does not simplify. Now be careful with this next one. If it starts with carbon, and it, the second thing is hydrogen, that's called a hydrocarbon. And when it reacts with oxygen, it's called a hydrocarbon combustion. Normally, this one would have the positive charge, so it should be first. So when I see it written in the reverse order, the alarm bell should go off. Glang, 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 glang. Uh, what we've got here is a hydrocarbon combustion. And instead of trying to do positive and negative, or actually positive and negative and negative, instead what we do is to say, you know what? This is a special case. When hydrocarbons combust, they always make the exact same two products, and they are the two things that you breathe out. You breathe out carbon dioxide and you breathe out water. These are, these are what's always given off by these, and this is called a hydrocarbon combustion. I'll just put hydrocarbon. All right, all right, combustion. How about just combust? Okay. Let's try next one. Uh, I have just a compound. Look, I don't see a plus sign. If there's no plus sign, then this is a decomp. decomposition, in which case I simply separate these two from each other. I'm going to separate the nitrogen from the iodine, and then we're going to look up to see if they're pesky 7s. Nitrogen, nitrogen is a pesky 7, so it's a 2. Iodine is a pesky 7, so it's a 2. The only trick to this is looking for pesky 7s. Alright, I'm not going to write this down anymore, but I've got a compound reacting with a single element. Hang on, let me get the phone. Well, that was my sister telling me that my two-year-old niece just had her birthday party, and I've got a video of it. Okay, so let's get back to this now. What we've got here is a single displacement. So I'm going to look up the ionic charges. Calcium, plus 2. Sulfite, minus 2. That's why it's a 1-to-1 -one ratio. Potassium, plus 1. I have to make a new positive-negative combination. So therefore, the K has to combine with the sulfite. 
Now since the sulfite is a minus 2 and the potassium is a plus 1, when we swap numbers I'm going to get two of these and one of these, which means I leave this alone. I don't even put parentheses around it, but I have to have two of the potassiums. Now don't forget, calcium got displaced. So poor old calcium is off by itself there. Okay, now let's look at our next one here. I have K and P, B, A, and chloride, uh, chlorate, sorry. Uh, so that's a double displacement. So when you have a double displacement, you look up the ionic charges. We have plus 1, minus 3 for phosphorus, plus 2 for barium, minus 1 for chlorate. Now we're going to go ahead and make new positive and negatives. I like to leave the positives where they are. And now he's going to combine with chlorate. ClO3, which is also minus 1, plus I have barium, which is a plus 2, combining with phosphorus, which is a minus 3. Now we're going to swap numbers, so this 3 is coming down here, and this 2 is coming down here. And I'm going to say this again, let's just look at this now. The numbers on this side have nothing to do with the numbers on this side. This is a 3. It wasn't over here. Why is it a 3? Because it's combined with phosphorus. And when they combine, all compounds have to be neutral. 3 positive 2's will be canceled by 2 negative 3's. Please, don't ever bring these numbers from this side over here. I don't want to see that. Well, let's just keep moving this up. We're doing so great. Let's see. All right, we've got two more before we get more fun on the back. All right, I see oxygen. Hmm, I might be tempted to write down a negative two, but then look here, I got carbon, I got hydrogen. If it starts with carbon, followed by hydrogen, that's a hydrocarbon combustion when it reacts with oxygen. These things, folks, can get really freaky looking. Don't let it get to you. All that matters is when one of these rascals combines with oxygen, you get what you breathe out, which is CO2 plus H2O. Just like that. Hydrocarbon combustion. This next one, let's just see here. Got a compound. Got a compound. Two compounds as a double displacement. Look up the ionic charges. Ammonium plus one. Fluorine minus one. By the way, that should not be in parentheses. I was a bad boy. Alright, let's keep going here now. We've got uh, hafnium my goodness, who uses hafnium? Hafnium is a plus four. That's a terrible looking four. Uh, and uh, carbonate is a minus two. Uh, so you can see what happened here. We swapped, we had a two to four, and then we simplified it to a one to two. Hmm. Now, regardless of that, I'm going to put the positive ion first in H4, which has a positive one charge, is going to combine with CO3, the carbonate ion, which has a negative 2. So I'm going to do everything the same. I'm going to swap. I need two of these and one. I need one of these. So therefore, I'm putting parentheses around the ammonium and we give myself two of them. Ammonium carbonate. Yes, you can put two polyatomic ions together. Plus HF with its plus 4 charge is going to combine with F, which has a minus one charge, so we're going to swap. I need one hafnium, and I need four fluorides. There it is. I think you're doing great. Let's go to the back side. There's more fun on back. All right, I got a compound and an element that's a single displacement, so I've got plus one. Oh, that was terrible. Minus three, plus two. I am going to go ahead and put the positive magnesium here, which is a plus 2. And I'm going to combine it with phosphate, which is a minus 3. And so we're going to do, I need two of these, I'm sorry, I need th three of these and two of these. So, three magnesiums when I swap, and I need two phosphates, so I'll put it here and put a 2 out there. And don't forget, it's easy to forget with these, that somebody got dumped, and that who got dumped was hydrogen. Now, hey, folks, any time you have an uncombined element, it's not part of a compound, you always need to check for pesky sevens, and it turns out 
That one there is a pesky 7, so you have to write a 2. Easy to forget. That's why I call them pesky. What about this one here? I only see one thing. I don't see a plus sign. I'm not combining it with anything. Therefore, I must be decomposing. This is a decomposition reaction. Just separate the two. I'm going to get ZR plus BR. And you know what I am not going to do? I am not going to bring this 4 over here. That's what amateurs do, and I am no amateur. So I'm just going to separate these two and say, well, is this a pesky 7? The answer is no. Is this a pesky 7, otherwise known as a diatomic element? The answer is yes, so therefore it has to be a 2. Next one. I have a compound plus a compound. That's a double displacement. Don't panic. Just say that's a plus 2. That's a minus 1. That's a plus 1. That's a minus 2. Oh, this is going to look easy when I'm done. I'm going to take the magnesium and get magnesium. A new partner of that partner is going to be sulfate. And because this is plus 2 and this is minus 2, I'm done. I don't have to do I'm going to swap and simplify it to a 1 to 1. Uh, plus sodium, which is a plus 1, is going to combine with nitrate, which is also a minus 1. And we've got ourselves a 1 to 1 ratio. There's no subscripts needed. I wonder why I gave one that easy. And now look how dumb I am. This one here is the same as this one here. I can't believe I did that. So, well, here you go. What I'm going to do is I, I've got a synthesis reaction here. This is a minus 1. This is a plus 4. So I put the positive one first. Put the negative one second. And we're going to swap numbers. I need one zirconium. I need four bromides. I can't believe I did that. Ah, Eric, I'm so frustrated with you. Oh, look at this next part here. This next part here, a lot of times uh, my students don't like. Uh, what I've done here is I've written out what happens I'm using words. And I'm asking you to write this as a chemical formula using chemical, uh, chemical symbols and uh, state symbols, okay? I can use state symbols in this case because we were told what it looked like. So let's just try this one here. Iron 3 oxide. Remember that 3 is telling me that this is a plus 3 ion. So I'm going to write uh, F, E, and I'll write a plus 3 because it's iron 3 oxide, which is a minus 2. And I'm going to swap numbers. It's a 2 to 3 ratio. And I was told it's a powder, and unless I'm mistaken, powders are solids. So I put a little state symbol underneath that says solid. Now where it says reacts with, I'm just going to write a plus. It says it reacts with aluminum powder. Now aluminum is an element, uh, and uh, it's a powder, so I'm also going to write an S. To form, that's how I write to form. Uh, uh, liquid iron and aluminum oxide. Well, I'm me. I like writing the compound first. I'm gonna say aluminum oxide. Aluminum is plus three. Oxygen is minus two, giving me a two to three ratio because I want to swap their numbers. Two of these, three of these, and I was told that uh, it's liquid, so I'm gonna put underneath it parentheses L. And I was told it's iron, F-E, whoop, 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 uncombined element alert, uncombined element alert, is this a pesky 7? It is not. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But I was told it's liquid. So underneath it, I'm going to write an L. See, I wasn't so bad. You guys freaked out for nothing. Let's try the next one. Solid nitrogen trichloride. Okay, so I know I'm dealing with a solid nitrogen trichloride Cl3 decomposes that means I don't add anything to it I just go like this and it says into two gaseous products well it, there's only two things I can get when it decomposes it decomposes into N and Cl whoop 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 uncombined element alert check for pesky sevens check for pesky sevens you know what Nitrogen is a pesky 7, and chlorine is a pesky 7, and I was told they are both gases, so I'm going to write a G underneath each of them. Yep. Look at that. Alright. I think this is fun. Zinc crystals. Crystals are solid, so I'm going to say Z-N. Underneath I'm going to write S. 
and I write plus two because I know that's what zinc makes. React with, that means I'm going to put a plus. Aqueous means a solution of, so underneath here I'm going to put AQ. And it's hydrogen chloride, so here's H and Cl. Now I've got to see if I've got the right subscript. So H is a plus one, and Cl is a minus one. Well, it's a one-on-one -on -one ratio, so I don't have to do anything, but that, that's not always the case. Forming a gas and a compound in solution. So, forming a gas. Well, first, you know, I always do it this way. I always make the compound first. I don't know why. i got Zn, which is plus two. I've got chlorine, which is minus one. We're going to swap numbers, so that means I need to have one of these and two of these, Z and Cl2, as a compound in solution. So I'm going to say A, Q, and a gas. Now that gas is whoever got displaced, and that in that case would be H. Uncombined element alert is H of pesky 7. You know what? It is. And I was told it's a gas, so I'm going to put a G underneath it. Well, let's try another one. Lead to nitrate solution. Hmm. Lead two. Now this two is telling me that this is a plus two lead. Lead is PB. It could be plus two or plus four, and I'm telling you this way it's plus two. Nitrate, if I recall, nitrate is NO3, which is a minus one. Hang on, the phone's ringing again. Darn it, we're popular. Okay, I'm back. That was my son calling from college. So let's just keep going with this. All right, the next thing it says is reacts with. That means I'm going to put a plus. Potassium is K. Iodide is I. Don't assume a one-to-one -one ratio. Let's look it up. This is plus one and minus one. Okay, it is a one-to-one -one ratio, but don't assume it is. Now, it says here lead nitrate solution. So underneath it, I'm going to write... AQ for aqueous solution and here it says potassium iodide in solution so I'm going to write AQ uh, and now what happens is uh, it says the lead uh, let's see I'm going to move this sideways because I don't see what it says <laughs> hang on a second alright let's try doing it this way the lead compound that forms during this reaction is a solid. Okay, all right. I knew that, by the way. All right, let's see here. All right, so first got to find our product. So I'm going to put PB, which is plus 2, is going to react with the iodine, which is a minus 1. So it's we're going to swap. It's a 1 to 2 ratio. And I was told that it's a solid, so I'm going to put an S. The lead compound it says it's a solid. Plus, the other product is dissolved in water, so I have K, which is plus 1, and NO3, which is minus 1. So those two cancel out, and I have AQ. Easy cheesy. Let's try another one. All right. Oh, our last one. Well, let's see what we have here. Uh, we have liquid CH818. Ooh, now you know what? That's a carbon and hydrogen. That's a hydrocarbon, so CH818. And it's a liquid, not dissolved in water, right? Reacts with oxygen. It says reacts with is plus oxygen. Hey, it's a pesky seven. There you go. Uh, and uh, it says it's a gas, so I'll put a G under there because it says reacts with oxygen gas. So I'll put a G. Forming. And it says one product that is a gas and one product that is a liquid. Well, let's just see if we figure this out. Hydrocarbon combustion, I don't look up the uh, charges. These are both molecules. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, it, oops, <laughs> it's going to be CO2 plus H2O. Now I know that this is going to be a gas. 
It says that this one's going to be a liquid, but in truth, when that happens, it's so hot that that water is also a gas. But there you go. That's how we do this. I enjoyed this homework. I hope you did.